You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. We have been Googling our way through the book of Mark. Uh, I think we left off at Mark 731. Does that sound right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So good place, Danny. What what's going on then? You no, wanna, you wanna... no, 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 not no, 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 my man. Okay. What are you talking about? Thirty one. No. Yeah. We no. didn't talk about the Syrophoenician woman. I didn't know if we did or not. We didn't so, even get through. So twenty four. We didn't. We did not do that. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Man. That was like 15 Bible, that's like hours of podcast press that we almost uh, didn't subject you both to who are listening right I now. Know you really tried to jump ahead, man. You, you were trying to cheat them out of five and a half different po- podcasts here. Uh, well, um, <laughs> clearly what comes out of a person is what defiles him. Uh, let's, on that note. Well, okay, here, I'm going to set up the context and then you're going to read 14 through, uh, 14 through 23. Because remember, uh, we got uh, Jesus talking with Pharisees here, um, and it's another clash between them. Um, and, and a lot of times, uh, or almost all the times in, in the book of Mark, um, it, it's, it's always, it's always a, a, a defiant sort of thing. Um, and so you'll, you'll notice that uh, in the other gospel uh, writers, uh, like at the very beginning, the, the, the Pharisees are, aren't uh, as necessarily antagonists, but with the book of Mark, it's immediate antagonists. And so we've got the same thing going on here. And so we've got some issues because uh, uh, Jesus' disciples uh, were eating with uh, unwashed hands. Um, and remember, that has nothing to not do like with... Not like in a COVID way, yeah. Right, not in a COVID way, not in a we're getting bacteria off of our hands because we've got soap and we, we sing the happy birthday song and then we, we drink under warm water twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a ceremonial way, right? Um, and so Jesus is is dealing with that. And then I, I believe that's where we uh, we left off at, at 14. So this is, this is the same conversation. We only got halfway through the conversation. Nope, don't you yawn. This isn't that boring. <laughs> Isn't it? And he being Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, hear me all of you and understand there is nothing outside of a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him since it enters not his heart, but his stomach and is expelled? And thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, thanks be to God. Right. Lobster, you may eat it. I can, unless you order it with extra envy. <laughs> Bacon, no. you may eat it unless you covet yeah. your neighbor's bacon, right? Which is actually that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, that is. Well, a there, there's a commandment around theft, so <laughs> the problem is though that 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 it starts from the heart, not the bacon. <laughs> not the bacon. <laughs> no. So okay, so what's the what's the big issue here? Um, and I, I know we know what the big issue is, but. This seems to be confusing, uh, not necessarily to us, but it seems to be confusing, certainly to the Pharisees. And I would say any first century Jew would hear this initially and and, and it, it would it would give them pause, at least, because it's not as if um, it's not as if it, it, it's it's an, an outlier uh, to, to have somebody say, uh, yeah, you can't eat bacon. If you do, then you're unclean. Right. You sure. can't eat shellfish but if you do your unclean. That that's a Levitical law. So mm-hmm. how is this? How should the the original hearer hear this? And then how do we? They hear? 
they they should be a little bit shocked by it but honestly so are we um because you're you're right jesus is contending with the the ceremonial law not the moral law but the ceremonial law which was meant to point to jesus uh who is actually here to address the thing that the ceremonial law was pointing towards um and, and that is simply that there are clean and unclean things uh, it, it's something that uh especially among the religious community, I think we, we don't want to see unless we want to blame somebody for. But it's, it's so easy to, to have this, this really sort of paradoxical view uh, about things that are unclean in, in, in religious life, where first of all, you're convinced that like in your church, there are no problems because everybody just loves the Lord so much. But, but also, most of your religious life is spent avoiding the things that are naughty, like watching Game of Thrones or referencing certain pop culture music. So you have to start the podcast episode recording over or, or any of these things where everything is just sort of running away from that which will defile you. Um, and, and in both cases, I think Jesus is sort of cutting to the quick of things and saying this is, this is uh, the, the foods themselves are neither good nor bad. The, the issue with, with this is, is you. Yeah. And, and I think what they, uh, the Pharisees certainly, and I would say if because uh, under the tutelage of the Pharisees and, and the scribes, then uh, the people in general um, had the same sort of uh, uh, problems, right? So we had the ceremonial law, which had taken precedent uh, over the things of the moral law. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit what we talked about last time where right. um, we talked about that uh, that core bond thing. Right. And mm -hmm. so uh, the, the people are so concerned about dedicating money, gifts, offerings to God that they're not taking care of their elderly parents and they're letting them starve to death. And Jesus is saying, explain to me how this works. How is how is it better to to to, to offer a core bond? Than uh, to make sure that your uh, elderly parents are, are safe and, and, and kept. So it mm -hmm. is this this tension between the ceremonial law and the moral law. And again, like you said, ceremonial law is fulfilled in Christ. Uh, he's the one who makes all things clean, in, including us. The moral law still stands even after Christ. Uh, it fulfilled in Christ, uh, but it still stands for us today, right? Mm -hmm. Take care of your elderly parents, right? Uh, if you're a husband, be faithful, those sorts of things. Yeah, the um, Ten Commandments. Right. And so that's what we're we're walking into uh, here uh, is is that Jesus is is quite literally saying, okay, ceremonial law, it's fulfilled in me, and it's it's really it's really it, the next year and a half is kind of weird because I'm here and I haven't said it is finished yet, and so we've kind of got this tension. And but when I say it's finished, it's going to be finished. It's right. going to be done. So I, I mean, it, it's it's. A chance, though, for us especially, because I, I, I think we sort of need to reckon with, it's good to know the history of this. But if you sort of leave it as simply just a historic fact, it, it's it's of little value. I think today, maybe one of the places where we have, have talked about this just as, as um, dangerously, if not wrongly, would be trauma. Um, there, there are uh, things in this world we just absolutely don't want our kids to see. Because it will... It, it will change them. It, it will hurt them in a way that, that you can never unsee. Um, there, there are things that you can be uh, forced to endure that, that actually change you. The things that go into your body can seem to apparently defile a person. Um, and in the same way, then, we, we end up with this idea that if we can just avoid anything bad happening to our kids, they'll be fine. If, if we can somehow create a world that is safe from assault and, and rape and, and every other atrocity from, from microaggression, from everything that, that might go into to a body, to an ear, to an eye, to a mouth, to a nose, and, and hurt in, a, in an ongoing way, we can create a better world. And it's true. Like, like the world would be better. We, we, we would be less traumatized. We would have less wrong with us. But how's your heart still? Because even if, if these things haven't happened, right, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say it, all of that is 100% true. I, it, again, I think the issue is um, that we've got uh, the difference between ceremonial and moral. Because all mm -hmm. the things that you addressed are moral issues still, right? Right. And so the moral 100%. issues of somebody else sinning against me and it's coming into me. How, that is still a moral issue that does actually affect me and, and can actually defile me because it is of sin, right? It, it's not the ceremonial thing. And so I, I think a, uh, maybe a, a good example of the ceremonial thing, ceremonially, how would you say that? Ceremoniously? Eh, whatever. 
the things of ceremony um Ooh, uh, nice. would be would be uh, uh maybe some of the traditions that are done within your congregation right mm. um and and so uh we we put out the uh, we put out the uh, the poinsettias on X day, and if you put it out on Y day, then it's absolutely yeah. wrong, and it screwed up everything for Advent, right? Whatever the case, may be. I'm just making something silly up. Um, but I think even today, we still focus on within the church, within our own Christian lives and our own maybe even Christian piety, we deal with the ceremonial things that um, aren't necessarily all that important over and against the moral things. And, and we make sure that we get all the ceremonies right. Um, and yet uh, our hearts are still hardened against our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there's power in ceremony. And I wonder if that's not why we flock to it. It's easier to, to gauge a ceremony than to, to gauge a heart. Um, but again, we have, we have Jesus who, who points out, well, it, it's out of the heart that these things come from. Right. Right. Uh, you know, it's the longest time I always, uh, I always forgot. I, I think Mark might be the only one uh, as we're transitioning over to, I'm assuming to the Syrophoenician woman here uh, mm -hmm. with our last, uh, uh, last words at this point. But um, I always, I always uh, remember it as uh, the book of Acts uh, being the part where, uh, uh, where our Lord declares all foods clean uh, and then also all people clean when he shows Peter that, big sheet full of lobster uh, covered bacon. Um, and those are the only two things that I'm <laughs> really concerned about, right? Bacon. Lobster, and lobster. bacon. That's it. We're cool. Uh, everything else could actually remain unclean as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but like a polyester shirt. I'm talking about food. I'm talking about food. Oh, okay. And this is cotton. Is it? No. <laughs> uh but uh, but here we've actually got uh, Mark weaving into this, obviously in the parentheses there that Jesus mm -hmm. didn't say this, but Mark weaves into it like, hey, when this Jesus was teaching yeah. this, even before the crucifixion, like he was trying to show us that all foods are clean. Mm -hmm. You can have your bacon and eat it too. <laughs> Do we want to keep going? Well, yeah, it's only been like thirteen minutes, man. Oh, I know, but is there more? Now? Is there more you want to actually talk about? Probably the heart podcast of man and not just bacon on chapter seven. My goodness, man! Cy the, the Syrophoenician woman. <laughs> and from there, he being Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. He entered a house and did not want anybody to know, and yet could not be hidden. But immediately, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a gentile a syrophoenician by birth and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter and he said to her let the little children be fed first for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs but she answered him yes lord but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs and he said to her for this statement you may go your way the demon has left your daughter she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone this is the uncomfortable word of the lord uh uncomfortable thanks be to god yeah absolutely i that to confrontation with 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 well jesus calling names <laughs> yeah everybody gets this what wrong. would jesus do i have a bracelet <laughs> i still have mine oh those are the best it was it was black and the uh, white letters Match and then clear. i got a different one for the other arm yeah. i had two of them all right so in case I was sitting with my right and it wasn't on my right, I could see it. Be like, right, oh, not the right hand know what the left is doing. So don't take, fine. Don't take uh, the candy. Oh, don't take the candy. Ah. <laughs> I was so biased. I tell you what, man. I, um, uh, I absolutely believe that sentence. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's um, a, a woman who comes begging that her daughter, her demon possessed daughter would be cast, uh, set free. And Jesus is like, no, nah. Little children eat food. I don't think so. No, I mean that's uh, what his words uh, say, right? Yeah, but I, yeah. But that's, that's what I'm talking about, right? But that certainly isn't what he, he, didn't he means. Mean it. If, no, he did, and, and and she's coming in faith too. This is interesting. Uh, when you when you're looking at, um, no, I know this is the tension that we have because it seems so weird. Um, remember, that's our friendship. As a, <laughs> it's tense and weird. 
very much so. Uh, remember when this actually, uh, uh, or, or how this takes place, Jesus has not gone out of uh, uh, Judea or Galilee yet, right? It, and mm-hmm. now he actually is. Uh, yeah. uh, Tyre and Sidon are like north, north. We're not super, we're not talking Turkey here, but we're talking north of the boundary of, of what Israel would have been, right? And so this is, uh, this is like uh, where, uh, um, Old Testament wise, this is where uh, I believe Jezebel came from. Tire, right? And so it's it's Gentile, Gentile country. Never has in any way, shape, or form been under under the reign uh, of 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 God, whether it's it's uh, religiously or or um, kingdom wise for for David or whatever, right? Um, and so Jesus is going up there. It's from a Mark's perspective, it seems as if he's like, "All right, man, I need a break. I need to get away." Kind of speaks to his humanity, and he's go literally going to a place where he's thinking, "Man, nobody's gonna know me up in Tyre and Sidon, right? I can actually get a break, and I'm not gonna have all these people hounding me, wink, wink, uh, for uh, uh, for healings, right? Um, and then all of a sudden." He can't even keep himself hidden up there. Of course he can't. He is Christ the Messiah. He is the Lord of life. And and, and this is going to, uh, word is going to get out and people are going to seek him. Um, and this woman does. This woman has a, a daughter who is of the demons. It doesn't really surprise me. Um, probably being of the Gentile era, area and up in Tyre and Sidon, she's probably pretty familiar with the pagans and, and their pagan gods. So the fact that uh, demons are are amongst her, her her daughter to, isn't that all that surprising? It's kind of like a shocker, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, but she comes uh, seeking aid from Jesus, and that's that's the whole the whole reason that we should do it. So this whole conversation, in in my mind, and then I'll turn, uh, throw it back to you. In my mind, this whole conversation that Jesus is having with the Syrophoenician woman has nothing to do with the woman itself and everything to do with his disciples who are watching it happen. So, no, I, I mean that this is it though. You, you, you see that there's a problem. You, you see where it went wrong, but that's not actually the help. This is, this is a part I actually don't understand. Um, the law is a, a wonderful diagnosis to the problem. I can look at this and say, yeah, that that's why that happened. That that's fair. I can say, you know, based on her background, you're you're right. There there should be no faith there. But what happens though is 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 astounding. And then to be met with with Jesus, who is is confronting her with this, and and not kindly. Um, I you you can you can play with the words all you all you want. You can say it's a little dog. It's like a cute puppy, not not like a dog dog. But it, it doesn't seem well received, like the Jesus who seeks the the lost we 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 have something that contends with a parable and i i I want you to help me through it uh the the parable says jesus leaves behind the 99 to seek the lost and he's just chilling at dinner like i'm busy right now come back after the check i disagree i really do i really do because she is coming to faith this uh, jesus can certainly see her faith and that's why i'm saying this conversation has uh very little to do with her and everything to do with the disciples and, and and those around because this is actually a a uh concrete example of what jesus was just talking about earlier about what makes people clean and unclean everything of the ceremonial law everything of the the stuff that doesn't actually matter screams that this woman is unclean and unworthy to receive the things of jesus okay and he literally just said in the in the section right. before and i'm, I'm assuming a couple okay, weeks okay. earlier he literally just laid it out for the pharisees and his disciples uh that's not what makes you clean then he goes to a place and everybody's like, oh, there's the unclean woman. And he's like, oh, you bunch of idiots. No, that's not how this goes. And now I'm going to actually play this out. And I feel that he's actually using her faith to drive home this point over and against probably his disciples and, and all the Jews that are with him um, uh, to, to kind of turn mm. the screws on them and what their understanding and idea of clean and unclean is. Because all of the disciples... Uh, None of them think uh, that this woman is worthy of of anything from Jesus. 
I can get down with this because I, I that that's again something I can relate to because there, there's sinners and then there's sinners, right? Like there, there's there's unclean and then there's unclean, and, and it's one thing for you to say, well, you had Jesus out of the heart, come all these bad things, and and nobody's perfect, but then to actually see somebody who doesn't fit and shouldn't be worthy come in, yeah, I, I, I right. But the odd thing is, like, <clears throat> uh, she she doesn't fit any of the things that he just said, at least that that we know of, right? It's not like uh, 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 Mark is saying, and this adulterous woman came up and asked mm-hmm. for. No, no. I put the, the demon into her. And right. Then... <laughs> it's not this wicked woman, this envious woman, this coveting woman. It's this mm. Syrophoenician woman. Oh, Syrophoenician. That's what's supposed to make her unclean. Okay. She doesn't deserve anything from Jesus. And Jesus plays along with it. Oh, yeah. I'm not supposed to do anything for you. You're I wonder just if that's a, how he said it. You're just a dog. I forgot. I, I, I'm I down with this. There, there is, too, even a degree for, for us, then, who, who have to wrestle with God, who, who have to go to God and ask him for a thing and not immediately see it, who, who seem or, or might feel brushed off by him. Uh, expound. I don't know where you go with that. How does how, that connect? How, how, how long is your, your prayer for the sick in church every week? It, it, it gets longer and longer and, and we pray and we pray and, and sometimes it, it feels like God has ignored us. Um, I, I, I want to talk a little bit too about just the, the, the realities of, of prayer not being sort of a, a, a transaction. Like you, you asked for Jesus to, to heal. Now Jesus healed and now you don't need Jesus anymore, right? That's the hope. That's the problem. <laughs> um, so, so, so that's instead how of that, we view it, right? Yeah, I know. So, so I- I- instead of this, uh, we actually have a, a woman who is who is held up not for for saying she deserves it because of her prayer, not not for saying she deserves it because of her background or anything else, but simply says, if it's going to be a crumb, that's enough. I-, I would rather a crumb from your table than than go on without you. Um, that that sort of the idea that that we would set the standards by which God must answer us is, is a dangerous it's a dangerous presupposition the the idea that we sort of have to set the the um the level at which we have to be to to go to him to receive him is is bad but the level of 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 expectation that we would have from him uh is also a a presumptuous thing that that sometimes goes awry because he has called you his child in your baptism he has he has called you uh, kin to jesus himself but at the same time, we, we take it then and say, so if I'm your kid, clearly you'll never tell me no, because that's how parenting works. Uh, and so if, if Jesus, if you really loved me, give me a car. Jesus, if you really loved me, you, you would heal me of this disease. When in, in reality, the, the issue at hand here is, is uh, actually it, it's, it's this woman striving away from evil with her family. Lord, save us from evil. And all it takes is a crumb from your table. And that's enough to save us from evil. You are so good that even a tiny little speck is enough to conquer the evil foe. And and so this isn't about give me what I want. How do I persist in my prayer until I get what I want? How am I worthy of of what I want? But but rather, if if the evil one is going to be conquered, it doesn't take as much as we seem to think it does. Yeah. And inevitably, we see that Jesus actually doesn't even work in crumbs, right? Mm. Because he gives to her and her daughter what he's given to others right what he's given to the 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 uh, sons of abraham right <clears throat> and we're, and i think this is just a a small little foretaste of uh uh what we get to see uh, the feast to come in chapter 8 um because uh, mark is mark is one of the uh, uh i think he's the only gospel writer who gives both accounts of miraculous feedings, right? Most of the time we just hear the feeding of the 5,000, which is down in Judea. And here uh, in chapter eight, that, uh, we'll probably get to uh, maybe eight or so, um, yeah. is uh, the feeding of the 4,000. Um, but it's, it's outside. It's to the Gentiles. And he's doing this yeah. exact same thing that he did to the Jews or for the Jews, right? Um so that's a really uh, interesting thing, and I think this uh, Syrophoenician woman and her faith is the—it's ex- it, it, just speaking to that. It's—it's it's, no, no, no. Um, Jesus is is for me too, and for my daughter. Um, there's no no two ways about it, right? Um, and Absolutely. so I'll play I'll, I'll play the little uh, I'll play the little uh, uh, ceremonially clean game with you, um, Jesus, because maybe you have to play it. 
or maybe I'm, we're just we're just playing this this part for your disciples, whatever, um, because I know that you will grant to me the things that you promised. Ooh, that's good. Can we finish the chapter? You want to knock out the the last little bit of Mark? Mm-hmm. Jesus heals a deaf man. Yeah, let's do it. All right, then he, being Jesus, returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee to the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. They begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd, privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember, Sidon is still going to be outside. It's going to be like the north, I believe, western part of the Sea of Galilee. So it's still going to be this area kind of of the, of the Gentiles. And it's the Decapolis. So it's the, the ten cities here uh, that are up there that, that Jesus mm. is is a, a part of. And so once again, it's this uh, uh, proclamation of, of all good things, uh, even for even for the Gentiles. So what's... <clears throat> What can we take away from this? Apart from the very specific, Jesus is literally healing in time and space, this guy who cannot hear, right? Um, apart from that, which is, that's not overlooking. That's an amazing thing in and of itself. Um, but how should we hear this then? I, I sort of yeah. like how earthy this one is. Oh, that was pretty clever. Yeah, I, I almost missed that to mm. be pointed. Mm-hmm. Um, no, this one is, is it's, it's hard to be a Gnostic and read this healing miracle. It, it's hard to think the body doesn't matter. When Jesus, who, you know, was the word of God there at creation, that, that was spoken into creation, that, that, that let there be light, God speaks, things happen. All Jesus needs to do is, is say the word and it, and it happens. Jesus, even by having his garment touched, can uh, have things... Uh, have 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 people healed here he 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 wet willy is a person um he 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 right. puts his finger in his ear he spits and touches his tongue this is how you get covid and and um looking up onto heaven and i don't think this one should be overlooked either he he sighs under the weight of this and says ephatha um that that for jesus to address the body um he himself first takes on human flesh for jesus to address the things that that sin is broken in this world that 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 we ourselves are falling apart it actually has a cost to him that i don't think the sigh is like i'm annoyed with this or the sigh is like this deep sort of spiritual moment for jesus i, I think it, it actually hurts him to cause to to perform miracles and, and you actually maybe get a little glimpse of it here because every single miracle that, that jesus performs is a is a down payment to undo sin Every single way that that Jesus would undo the wages of sin in this world has to be ultimately paid at the cross. He knows what this is going to cost him. In all of the the same divinity that that can miraculously give a guy back his his hearing and and his speech, he knows what comes from this. If if I'm going to let this guy hear again, I'm going to have to hurt for him. Okay. Okay, because uh, yeah, uh, the way that you said it to, to begin with that uh, that it, it almost mystical. it almost sounded like Jesus had. Uh, X amount of uh, uh, of uh, miracle health, juice, miracle juice, or health, and I'm every miracle single juice. miracle that he did, it would take down his bar, uh, like in those old school video games, right? You get hit by the bat, and then you get ah, oh, then, then the spider comes and hits you, ah, oh, right? Um, but no, it's not that. What you're saying is that uh, uh, when he is doing miracles and healing people, he's undoing the wages of sin. And really, the only reason that he uh, is able to do that is because he's the one who's going to ultimately undo sin at the cross. Mm-hmm. Right. That that uh, is a really really important point that you just made. Um, that th- that sort of second hit you get in video games only came because kids were bad at video games. Like it used to be back in my day, if if the if the Goomba hit you, you just died. If you got shot in Contra, no, you just you fell down and died. And um, really, I think it, it's a great atrocity that we would teach our children that they get more than one try on this thing. Um, uh, but but it's also tr- it's true. It's but true. also Jesus Jesus <clears throat> is not sort of low on health and and needs a mushroom. Room. um but but rather uh no i i, I the turkey I legged that, gauntlet that was a good one that's a good one um i i think that rather you have to look at this in light of the cross and not apart from the cross and it's so easy to divorce the miracles from the cross because 
the miracles are what we want more than the cross. The the miracles are what we pray for more than the cross. Um, it, it's easier to in the, the the midst of suffering or in the midst of watching your loved ones suffer, especially to to say. If you are a loving God, I will mark your love by you making me not hurt right now. And not if you are a loving God, you will hurt for me so that I will be brought through this and back out into life everlasting. Um, but if, if the cross is connected to the miracles, then then actually find the source of the, the wrong, the, the, the source of the wrong, the source of the deafness, the source of the death is sin. And if Jesus is going to take away the thing that sin caused, he has to take away the sin. And the way that Jesus takes away the sin is by dying on the cross. Yeah. And I... Uh, last thing for me, <clears throat> I mean that's great. I, I, I think also <clears throat> remember he's he's uh, up there with the Gentiles. We've just had a uh, a concrete example of clean and unclean. We've got another concrete example, of presumably up inside, and this guy is not mm -hmm. uh, not a a, a, a a Jew or or of Israel. <clears throat> and I don't think it's uh, a coincidence that Mar probably Jesus did more than just these two miracles. It's my assumption up there. Um, uh, but I don't think it's a coincidence that Mark is, uh, um, highlighting this one, right? Uh, Jesus is going to open the ears of the Gentiles so that they can hear a word of salvation for them. Ooh, that's nice. Um, that, that's really nice. See, I was going to connect it to, uh, the Syrophoenician woman actually and go backwards, uh, a, a, as well and sort of point out the fact that when you are praying and you seem brushed off and ignored by God, you get to answer this based on something more than just, do I, do I have the answer to this particular petition, but rather do you already have the thing that is, has granted it? Um, so for this, this man, um, for Jesus to, to heal his deafness, Jesus then has to go to the cross. But for you who pray for suffering, for cancer, for any of these other uh, awful, awful things that happen in this world, you actually already have the answer. You have the down payment on the miracle made already. Uh, for you who contend with God and and feel uh, ignored by him, feel brushed off by him, he has already actually paid for your miracle. You might not see it until the resurrection. And, and that's not him holding out on you, but rather him making sure that when you actually get it, it's in a place that it cannot be taken away from you again. Uh, and, and in some places, there, there are great miraculous healings in this world, and God be praised. But but even if, if you're praying for your miracle and you're not hearing it yet, you get to recognize that the thing that grants it has already been given to you. Sin has already been undone. Death has already been undone. And so when you pray, it's not just sort of for a temporary relief, a turkey leg for your gauntlet come down to give you just enough time to to then get attacked by the next monster that that shows up. Because honestly, we're not good at that game. Uh, but but rather, it it is the eternal life that that, that that cannot be robbed from you from the foe. I was always the mage. Well, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot my fire! Yeah, yep. We out.